with our ship, asteroids, and menus complete. In this lesson, we'll create our asteroid spawning and level progression mechanics. In the link in the description, you'll find the link to freely download the assets and scripts or macro we created in this video. Feel free to download them and follow along, dissect the macro, or to simply use the completed effect in your game or project. Before we begin, let's go over a few small changes and improvements we made between lessons. One of the changes we made is to our appearance when our ship spawns. Originally, we adjust our sprite's alpha channel to make our ship appear as it's semi-transparent as it spawns or when it's upgraded. However, as we playtested, we found that with multiple asteroids on screen, that this effect can be confusing or hard to notice. So instead, we used what we originally planned as one of our asteroid sprites to appear as a shield when the ship initially spawns. To create the pulsating effect, we added an embedded flow machine to our sprite. This flow machine simply uses a dose scale and a weight node to scale the sprite larger than it back to its original size, at which point our last weight node loops back into our dose scale to continue this cycle until the startup shield is destroyed. We also use that same sprite and added it into our upgrade light effect prefab, and for this prefab we simply replace our glowing dot sprite with that of our electronic shield effect. This way, when the player upgrades to their new ship, the upgrade effect appears as though it's transferring to the ship to give the ship temporary invulnerability. The last change we made is to our laser beam effect. We again used our shield sprite and we added it as a child to our round glow effect that appears before our beam is fired. And for this sprite, we again created an embedded flow machine and simply used a do rotate to rotate the object while it's on screen. We also used the lifetime variable from our laser beam parent prefab object in order to set the time which this object is destroyed. With that complete, let's begin creating our asteroid spawning mechanics. We'll start by creating a few 3D cubes, which we'll place at the top of our screen right outside the view of the camera and we want to create them to be children of our spawn point game object. With all of our spawn points now created, let's create a tag, which we'll call asteroid spawn point, and we'll tag all the game objects we'll be using for our asteroid spawn points. We want to next select all of our asteroid spawn points and turn off all their mesh renders and colliders. With that complete, Let's now go into our game manager state machine, and let's first go into our start state. In our start state, we simply want to find all the game objects in our scene and set them as values in a transform list variable. So let's start by creating an object graph variable, which we'll call asteroid spawn point transform list. And after the pause menu set active node, we need to create a find game objects with tag node, and the tag we'll use is the asteroid spawn point tag we just created. And let's create a set variable node for our asteroid spawn point transform list. However, since this is a list of our transforms and not our game objects, we'll need to get our transform components before setting them in our list. So after our find game objects with tag node, let's create a for each loop node. We'll use the output of our find game objects with tag node for the input of our for each loop node. And in our body, we need to create a get component node in order to get our transform component. Once we have our game object's transform component, we'll add that to our list using a list add item node. For the list we'll be adding to, we'll use our asteroid spawn point transform list variable. And we'll use that output to set our asteroid spawn point transform list variable. However, since this operation is last in our graph, by the time it occurs, our AG game object is inactive. And since our spawn points are children of our AG game object, they will be inactive as well, which means we won't be able to find them using our find game object with tag node. In order to fix this, let's make this the first operation that occurs by connecting it directly to our onEnterState event node. And so our node list appears more organized 
Instead of connecting our set transform list variable node directly to our game object set active node, let's create a custom event trigger, which we'll call start main menu, and we'll connect its receiver to our game object set active node. With that complete, let's now go into our playing state. Before we begin, let's first go over the mechanics that we want to create. When the player first enters our game, we want there to be a brief pause before the asteroids begin to spawn. This way, the player will have a few moments to explore the controls of the game before the asteroids begin. Additionally, we also don't want our asteroids to spawn at a set spawn point. We instead want them to spawn at a random spawn point from our spawn point list. Additionally, while we want the player to only be met with the basic asteroid at the very start of their playthrough, after the first few asteroids, we want to begin spawning random different asteroid types. With that in mind, let's begin by creating a scene graph variable, which we'll call asteroid prefab list, and another variable called asteroid basic prefab. So we'll start by creating an on enter state, and we'll set it to be a coroutine. And we'll next create a wait for second state and add a four second delay to give our player time before the asteroids start spawning. Let's next use a custom event trigger, which we'll call spawn asteroid. We'll start by using our spawn asteroid custom event node. From there, we want to create a branch node to see if the player's score is high enough to spawn our other type of asteroids. To do that, we'll use a greater than or equal to node. We'll use 50 as the value to get to our other asteroid types. And if the player hasn't scored 50 points, we want to create a game object instantiate node so we can instantiate only the asteroid basic prefab. But for our position, we want to randomly get one of the transforms that we have stored in our asteroid spawn point transform list. To do this, we need to create a random range integer node. Keep in mind, if we use a float, it won't output only whole numbers but also numbers with decimal points. Once we've gotten our random number, we need to use a list get item node and we'll use our asteroid spawn point transform list as the input list value. And we'll determine the max value from the amount of spawn points that are in our list. So let's create an object graph integer variable, which we'll call asteroid spawn point count. We'll keep the minimum zero once we get our output transform, we need to then use a transform get position value, and we'll use that position for the input of our game object instantiate node. For our rotation, we'll use a blank quaternion. After our game object instantiate node, let's create a wait for seconds node, and instead of using a fixed delay, let's create an object graph float variable which we'll call spawn pause. And to begin, we'll set its value to 1.5. And after our wait for seconds node, let's use our spawn asteroid custom trigger. And since we're using a wait for seconds node, we'll also set our spawn asteroid custom event to a coroutine. Let's now go back to our start state so we can set our asteroid spawn point count. After our set transform list variable and before our custom event trigger, Let's create a set variable node for our asteroid spawn point count. For its value, we'll use the output of our set transform list variable as the input of a count items node. We'll then use the output of that count items node to set the value of our asteroid spawn point count variable. With that complete, let's test out our functionality so far. But before we do so, we need to first create a prefab of our asteroid and then place that in our asteroid basic prefab value. So we can see once our game starts up, if we go down within our object graph variables, that our spawn point list now has a transform for all of our spawn point game objects. Additionally, we have a spawn count of 14. And since our number starts at zero, and our last spawn count is 13, we can see that we have all 14 items listed in our spawn count. So we can see after four seconds that our asteroids start spawning. And once we've surpassed our 50 points, we can see that our asteroids no longer spawn because at this point, 
we will begin randomizing the spawning of our different type of asteroids. With our base spawning mechanic complete and working correctly, in our next lesson, we'll create additional type of asteroids. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, and free game asset giveaways.